Hi guys, I'm Danny Danger Stoller and I play Ivy in Fucking Up Everything at Woolly Mammoth for DC Fringe. And we just had our opening weekend and it was stellar. And um, one of the things that really blew me away was how connected people became to the characters and how much they related to them and had opinions about their journeys, etc., etc. One of the things that really surprised me was that a lot of people were talking to me about how my character kind of goes for a bad boy and if that's the right decision to... To, you know, go after somebody who doesn't, who kind of almost seems beyond redemption to a, a point, or seems completely oblivious to the idea of needing to change. And I started wondering, but aren't there a lot of figures in in creative pop culture and movies and plays and things like that who seem completely awful and terrible, and then turn out to change specifically for love? And um, yeah, I mean, maybe that's why girls like dicks, you know, or jerks, I guess. So um, I went through a bunch of my old movies, and I made two groups. I made a group of guys who do change and what good co things come of that, and guys who start out as assholes and end up as assholes, and they don't really get much of anything. So it really is all about the switch, you know what I mean? And if we have faith in somebody's ability to change and in two people's ability to compromise and mold into the best versions of themselves for each other, then I think people becoming who they truly are is not a completely implausible thought. So here are some of the things we're going to start with. The first thing we're going to start with is an asshole who starts out as an asshole and ends as an asshole. And what does he get from it? Mike Damone. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This guy does not pay for his half of Jennifer Jason Lee's abortion. The entire school find out, finds out that he has a small penis. That's, I mean, yes, Jennifer Jason Lee has a much worse time, but he is definitely knocked down a few pegs because it's written all over his locker and his new car, and uh, he almost gets beat the fuck up by Forrest Whitaker. So, like, there's nothing really good happening for Mike Damone in this film. Uh, Steve Stifler in American Pie. Before the third installment, when he goes after January Jones and becomes a good guy, he is pissed on and he drinks jizz. So, like, that just goes to show you, if you don't really make this switch or work to be a better person, you are probably going to be drinking pale ale and getting urinated on. So, Heathers. J.D., Starts out as a jerk-off, ends up as a jerk-off murderer, and ends up getting blown up in a school by Winona Ryder after having his fingers cut off. Nothing works out for him. Um, Bill Paxton as Chet Donnelly in Weird Science. He is a jerk-off to his brother and to, and to his brother's friends and everybody else. He ends up getting turned into... I, okay, I never really knew if it was a toad or a giant piece of shit, but either way... What a terrible way to live out your life. So that just goes to show you that if it's kind of like you are what you eat, you also are what you how you act, I guess. So Bill Paxton turns into crap because he is a piece of crap. In that movie, I actually love Bill Paxton. So Chet is is the bastard. Um, Thomas F. Wilson as Biff. Biff actually had a last name in Back to the Future. It was Biff Tannen. Which I find so weird. Like I didn't. I thought it was kind of like Cher or Madonna, just Biff. But Biff is a total jerk off from the beginning until the end. And his comeuppance is the fact that he ends up being the like lame ass tracksuit wearing assistant to the biggest dork in his high school. So I mean, you know, you will get your comeuppance. Now here are the winners: the guys who start out as totally irredeemable jerk offs and end up getting to reap the benefits of turning into good guys. Freddie Prince Jr. as Zack Siler and she's all that. He realizes that he doesn't have to be a total asshole. Rachel Lee Cook loses the glasses and the ponytail. Turns out that she's a total fox. Ta-da! Uh, Judd Nelson as John Bender in The Breakfast Club. You could shove quarters in that guy's nostrils. Has nothing to do with the fact that he is a total jerk at the beginning of that movie. Then he sort of starts to reform, gets Claire, Molly Ringwald's earring. They trade. They kind of start a thing because he becomes a better person. And he gets a kiss on the neck in the supply closet. Um... Billy Crudup as Russell Hammond in Almost Famous. He does not get the girl, but 
he does become a good person and he helps out the lead character by calling Rolling Stone and telling the truth. He actually does the best thing of all. The benefits that he reaps are internal and just allow him to help someone else rather than him having to get anything from it. By admitting his faults, he ends up helping another guy's career and sort of starting afresh and anew in a totally not assholey light. Um, Ethan Hawke in Reality Bites starts out as a total douche. His best friend Lena is in love with him. He's in love with her. He treats her like crap. And then he realizes that maybe that wasn't the best of choices and they end up falling madly and completely in love and he totally reforms into a great guy but still able to be a musician. So that also proves something about this show. Just because a guy's a musician doesn't make him a total tool. Um, here's kind of a midway one. Cruel Intentions. Ryan Phillippe starts out as a jerk, ends up becoming a good guy, and then goes back on it, and as soon as he goes back on it, he gets fucked over and gets hit by a car and dies. So you have to go the whole way. You have to stretch that extra inch, go that extra mile. Uh, Shallow How. I mean, what do we, what do we need to know about that? Um, Rob Lowe in St. Elmo's Fire. He starts out as a terrible, awful guy. Then he realizes that he has to be a better, you know, a, a good person and that the life that he's leading right now is leaving him alone and completely sort of this phony and terrible existence where he's just pretending to still be like this young guy even though he's getting older and he's the only one of his friends who really isn't doing anything with his life or actualizing any of his dreams. And once he realizes that, he gets to take Mayor Winningham's virginity and go to New York with his sax and become a great musician. Another musician who turns into a great guy and his craft only gets better for it. Shane West in A Walk to Remember. He almost kills a kid at the beginning of this movie. He almost kills a dude. And yet he finds Mandy Moore and they end up getting married, even though she dies very shortly afterwards. But he finds true love, which is awesome. And we're forgetting like the biggest one of all. John Travolta in Greece as Danny Zuko. He starts out as a total asshole. And then by the end, he's wearing the Letterman jacket and all this kind of stuff. And then they realize the biggest compromise of all. They can both wear black and leather. And they can fly in a car. So, you know, all it takes is that little something. And the number one bad boy changed into a good guy because of love and truly does change, Shrek. Shrek starts out as a total antisocial jerk with no friends, living in a sad, unpopulated swamp, meets Princess Fiona and Donkey, so it shows that, you know, you need to change for your friends and your girlfriends and your love interests. And he ends up saving all of the fairy tale characters, finding love and realizing true beauty is on the inside. So he really, he gets it all down there, which I'm, you know, very pleased about, obviously. And, um... Yeah, so I just, I think that it's not completely implausible to change, obviously. If life mirrors art at all, or if this art, uh, fucking up everything, mirrors any of the other art, you know, I think it's all about realizing that sometimes we can take off the mask. Um, in fucking up everything, a lot of these characters can seem somewhat archetypal because people in general tend to try and find where they best fit. They give themselves a box, sort of. And it's only when we're able to realize we can push out of the confines of that box that we truly find who we are and are able to change. And I think that the cast of this is really awesome because they really do work to become the new, the new changed people at the end of this show. It's not like they do complete, you know, 180s and they're completely different, but they do realize, realize the changes they need to make. And that is half the battle, I think. And they really allow themselves to kind of take off the mask, take off the, you know, initial idea. They're, they're kind of wearing personas at the beginning sometimes. And they realize that they're allowed to kind of slip in and be who they truly are, which is lovely to me. And it kind of reminds me of that quote from Almost Famous, which is, the only true currency in this bankrupt world is what we share with someone else when we're uncool. And it's the scenes that seem to matter the most to me in fucking up everything are the scenes where people 
really allow themselves to be their inner loser and their inner dork. And I think that's what makes these characters so relatable and this show so awesome is the fact that it's people realizing that they don't have to constantly play a part and that they can still kind of, for lack of a better sort of metaphor, be the lead in their own life and still have a good story even when they're not constantly performing or not constantly trying to be a certain way for the people around them, that they're allowed to have multi-faceted personas. I mean, ogres are like onions. They have layers or parfaits, as Donkey says. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that small amount of uh, pop culture referential stuff and that you bring your layered awesome personality and all of your friends layered awesome personalities with you to see fucking up everything it is absolutely fucking awesome they uh they broke the mold when they wrote this one i think it's pretty fucking sweet so um yeah definitely definitely come and uh it's awesome. I don't know what else to say. So that was my blog post. I hope it didn't bore the shit out of you. And if it did, I'm totally fucking sorry, but I do a lot better when other people are writing my words, so come see me in the show. Um, and peace out. See you later.